want to say Shabbat Shalom to everyone. God bless you. Thank you for joining us for this Shabbat uh, Saturday meeting of the Holy Scriptures in Israel. And uh, we were just uh, thinking and singing of the God of our fathers, the God of our Lord Yeshua the Messiah, who even in time of trials and trouble in life, he is the same. He's always there for his own people. How wonderful for us to turn to him, to read his word, to learn of his love and care for us, and to worship him and adore him for who he is and for what he has done uh, for us. So let us pray together. We commit the meeting to the Lord, and we will turn to Ecclesiastes, to Kohelet, uh, chapter 9. And so Abba, our Father, the God of our fathers, Avinu Malkeinu, we pray and ask your blessing upon the ministry of your word as we are occupied with what you have for us in this ministry meeting today, for we ask it in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. So, beloved friends and dear brothers and sisters, turn with me to the book of Kohelet, that is the book of Ecclesiastes. And we are in chapter 9. Uh, chapter 9 has 18 verses, and uh, we will look perhaps in this ministry meeting uh, to the first 10 verses, and then in the will of the Lord we'll continue later on with the remaining portion of this ninth chapter of the book of Ecclesiastes. Remember that Ecclesiastes, the preacher, is none else but Shlomo, Solomon, the king of Israel, who is now uh, 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 presented before Israel the instruction in all this book of Ecclesiastes, Kohelet, as a, an inst instruction to the people of Israel, instructing, instruction for you and I concerning how to live our lives here under the sun, Tachat Hashemesh. Where everything is vanity of vanities here in this world, but God's people are called to live for God here and follow Him here under the sun. And so in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verses 1 to 10, we read, For all this I consider in my heart, even to declare all this that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of God. No man knoweth, neither no man knoweth either love or hatred by all that is before them. All things come alike to all. There is one event uh, to the righteous and to the wicked, to the good and to the clean and to the unclean, to him that sacrifices and to him that sacrifices not. As is the good, so is the sinner, and he that uh, uh, wrath, uh, weareth uh, as he that feareth an oath. This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun, that there is one event unto all. Yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they live, and after that they go to the dead. For to him that is joined to all the living there is hope. For the living dog is better than a dead lion. Verse 5, For the living know that they shall die, but the dead knoweth not anything. Neither have they any more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. 
also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished, neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. Go thy way, eat thy bread with joy, and drink thy wine with a merry heart, for God now accepteth thy works. Let thy garments be always white, and let thy hand lack no ointment. Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the day of thy uh, the life of thy vanity, which he has given thee under the sun all the days of thy vanity, for that is thy portion in this life and in thy labor which thou takest under the sun. Whatsoever thy hand findest to do, do it. Do it with thy might, for there is no work no device, no knowledge, no wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. <clears throat> now, beloved friends and dear brothers and sisters, I will stop here with uh, verse 10 of Ecclesiastes uh, chapter uh, 9. Now, you remember, I just want to remind you, that as we studied the book of Ecclesiastes, we have mentioned already many times, and I'm just having to repeat it, uh, that the word Ecclesiastes comes from the Hebrew word a Kohelet. We read in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 1, the word of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Vanity of vanity, says the preacher, here's the word Kohelet, Ecclesiastes, in Hebrew Kohelet. Vanity of vanity, says the preacher, vanity of vanity, all is vanity. What profit has a man of all his labor which he taketh under the sun? You remember we read it already in the first a few verses of Ecclesiastes chapter 1. We also read in verse 12 of chapter 1, where Shlomo, the king of Israel, said, I, notice, I, the preacher, here's the word Kohelet again, Ecclesiastes, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. So here is King Shlomo, who is called the preacher or the Kohelet or the Ecclesiastes or the gatherer of the people of Israel. He was a king over Israel and he was in the city of Jerusalem. And he is the one that have given to us this very important book that is called Kohelet Ecclesiastes. We have also learned, beloved brothers and sisters, that as we are looking at the outline of the book of Ecclesiastes, we learn here in these, uh, 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 in these uh, chapters that we learn of the vanity of pleasure. We learn uh, of the uh, vanity in life in general, the vanity of industry, labor, and the vanity of human wisdom. We have learned of the vanity of earthly uh, existence. We learn of the vanity, as we are studying together, the vanity of uh, acquiring riches and, and political popularity, and the vanity of many dreams and many words, and the vanity of, of loving abundance, and so on. We have learned all this is the vanity of wealth without the gift of God to enjoy it, the vanity of wandering desire, the vanity of foolish laughter, the vanity of injustice in this life. And now we continue now and we are learning in chapter 9 and chapter 10 the vanity of injustice in this life and the important for us to have the wisdom of God to know how to live here in this world. In chapter 11, the vanity of the day of darkness. In chapter 11 again, the vanity of childhood and youth. And ultimately, the conclusion is the remember now thy creator in the day of thy youth. That is what the 
a preacher is seeking to teach Israel and to teach you and me as well. In our previous meeting together, we have concluded Ecclesiastes chapter 8. And just to remind you that in the 8th chapter, we have learned a few things that are very important, that he's continued to dwell on those things concerning the benefit of godly wisdom. You remember in chapter 8, in chapter 8, we have uh, learned this important lesson, the uh, benefit of godly wisdom. The believers in the Lord Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah, need to realize that even though we live in a fallen world, there is benefit in having godly wisdom in knowing how to live here in this world under the sun until the day come where the Lord Jesus the Messiah will come and take us to heaven. So God have left us here, just like he have left Israel in days of old here on earth. And, he, and he's instructing Shlomo uh, to tell Israel the importance of godly wisdom here in this world, in this vain and empty world filled with sin and corruption. And the godly people of God are called to live for God here in this world. And so if you remember, we have covered chapter 8 and Chapter 9 continues, but I want you to remember that godly wisdom enables a man to know how to interpret all things here in this world. We learned it in chapter 8 and verse uh, 1. Then we have also learned in chapter 8, verse 2 to 17, that uh, Solomon instructed Israel how to benefit from godly wisdom. And if you remember, godly wisdom will lead one to submit to the government that be. Godly wisdom will lead one to prepare for the future. Godly wisdom will lead one to arm himself against wrongdoings. And godly wisdom will lead one to endure the vanity that existing here in this world. That's what we have learned from Ecclesiastes chapter 8. And as we are turning to chapter 9, you will notice the link because immediately the first verse of Ecclesiastes chapter 9, Shlomo is saying, for all this, notice that, for all this, what all this? All this which I have just mentioned to you in the previous chapter, that godly wisdom will help you in life. All this, notice, I considered in my heart. That's how we begin Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Now, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, the theme of this ninth chapter is that everything in life is really in the hand of God. All things in life are in God's hand. This is the theme of the ninth chapter. Life is filled with challenges. And everything is in God's hand. You remember what we read in Romans 8 and verse 28, For we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them which are the called according to his purpose. And the believers, uh, all things that happen to the believer in his or her life is really in the hand of God. No wonder Shaul Paul wrote to the Romans when he said to them, for we know. How do you know? Because we believe that whatever God allows us to experience in our life is really in his hand. And we know that all things that happened to us in our life is really working for the good of God's people. For we know that all things work together for good, for the good of those that belong to the Lord. In other words, the good and the bad, the difficult and the easy, the hard and the, and the not so hard. The, 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 the thing that happened to us in our life, everything is in the hand of the Lord. And that's what... Sh Shlomo is seeking to communicate here in this world. There are two points here that we learn in Ecclesiastes chapter 9. First, in the first 10 verses, 
Shlomo is saying, except the fact that death will come for all people. Death will fall upon all men. In verses 11 to 18, Shlomo will say that except the fact that life is uncertain, life is uncertain, but we are dealing in this ministry meeting with the first 10 verses, and the first 10 verses of Ecclesiastes chapter 9 deal with the fact that Shlomo is telling Israel And he's telling you and I today that we are to accept the fact that death will fall upon all. Let me just remind you what we read already earlier in Genesis chapter 3. If you turn to Genesis chapter 3, when sin came into this world, we do read in Exodus chapter 3 and verse 19. God said to Adam, the federal head of of all the human race, because Adam disobeyed God, God said to Adam in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 19, In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For, notice, out of it it, thou was taken, and dust thou art, and unto dust shall thou return. In other words, God had already promises, promised to Adam that Adam will die and his descendants will, will die. A scripture te- teaches us it is appointed unto man once to die and after this the judgment. Death will fall upon all men, Hebrews 9 and verse 27. We have the assurance from the word of God that all will die. And we as believers have to accept this fact. Now, when we hear of someone passing away, it's not always pleasant to listen that someone whom we love dearly have just passed away. But the believer, just as the unbeliever, all will leave this scene. And that is exactly what Shlomo is saying, except the fact that death will come upon all. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. That is a sure thing that will fall upon all uh, humanity. And so, as we know that all scripture is, is for the benefit of God's people, as we, as Paul in 2 Timothy 3 verse 16 said that all scripture is given by inspiration. The Spirit of God is the one that wrote the Word of God and it is given for our benefit. We are to benefit from what we learn here in Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verses 1 to 10. So Shlomo continues to share with Israel what he learned from his own life, that ultimately everyone will pass away, the good, the bad, the believer and the unbeliever, male or female, unless the rapture will happen. Of course, Shlomo did not know about the rapture of the assembly because the assembly was not born as yet. Israel, the nation, was here uh, on earth, but only way to escape escape death is uh, through the unique way where God will take the believers of the church age to be taken at the rapture to heaven. And so you notice that three things we learn here from the first 10 verses, and that Shlomo is communicating with Israel and with you and I as we study these verses. First thing in verses 1, 2, and 3, Shlomo declared that death happened uh, to all, the righteous and the wicked. Listen to this. In verse 1, we read, notice that, for all this, the wisdom that you need to learn how to live your life here on earth, for all this I considered in my heart, he said, even to declare all this, again, is referring to the previous chapter, that the righteous and the wise and their works 
are in the hand of God. No man knoweth either love or hatred by all that is before him. Notice what he says. All that is the righteous and the wise do is in the hand of God. In other words, when we live godly here in this world, notice he said all this, the righteous, the wise, their works. In other words, whatever we do here in this life, the good thing that we do in this life, everything is in the hand of God. Notice, they are all the works that one does are in the hand of God. No man know either love or hatred by all that is before them. In other words, whatever we do here in this world, if we are acting in a godly way, where whether we are wisely do things and whether we do things righteously, whatever the result that will come out of it, it is in the hand of God. Sometimes we wonder, how come the righteous suffer here in this world? They do the right thing and yet they suffer. They do good things and yet they suffer. Peter mentioned that in uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, that even when they, we do the righteous things, sometimes we suffer for righteousness sake. But everything is in the hand of God. The blessing will come that will come out of it, or the discipline that will come out of it. The important is, Shlomo is saying, that all these I have taught you in the previous chapter to live godly, in godly wisdom in this world. When you do the righteous things and when you do the wise thing, then when you do works that is good before the Lord, whatever the result that will come out of it is in the hand of God. And that's why in verse 1 it is important all what the righteous people do and the wise people do is really in the hand of God. He will bless them. He will uh, 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 encourage them. He will provide for them. He will reward them. But whatever will happen here in this wicked world is in the hand of God. You know, we wonder sometimes how is it possible that Bad things happen to people who do the right things. We don't quite understand it. But again, to remind you that Romans 8, 28 says, For we know that all things work together for good. Even the things that happen in this world that are not so good, working out for the benefit of God's people, it teaches us to lean on God harder, to wait on Him more to trust in the Lord with all our hearts and not to, lean, not to lean on our own understanding and in all thy way to acknowledge him and he is giving us direction. You know, look at the history of the men and women of God. They didn't have it easy here in this world. They lived godly. And yet we read the list of them in Hebrews chapter 11 and many of them suffered in this world though they live godly in this world. Everything is in the hand of God. And godly wisdom will help us to accept this from the hand of the Lord. He continued, notice that in verse 2, all things under the sun happen alike to the righteous and also to the wicked. Notice I'm reading verse 2. All things are alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, to the good and to the clean, and to the unclean, to him that is sacrificing, and to him that sacrificing not. As it is, as is the good, so is the sinner, and he that sweareth, as he that feareth, that, that feareth an oath. In other words, everything happened here in this world is in the hand of God. Notice the ex expression in verse 1, in the hand of God. The Hebrew word is beyad Elohim. He's the one that is in charge of the affairs of this world. He is sovereign. His providence is happening exactly as he will in the life of his people. Remember, beloved brothers and sisters, in the days of Mordechai HaYehudi, Mordechai the Jew, and Esther the Queen, 
In the book of Esther, we don't have the name God mentioned even once. We don't have the word prayer mentioned even once. But we have the hand of God is working in the life of the Jewish people who were in the dispersion in Persia. And you remember how God preserved the Jewish people, even though Haman wanted to destroy all the Jewish people. And God, in a miraculous way, even though his name is not mentioned, he took care of his own. He allowed them to experience persecution, but he has also allowed them to experience blessing and survival. And so what we learn here in verse 2, that all things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked. Something happened to the wicked. Sometimes things happen to the wicked here in this world that we are wondering how come things work well for him. And yet, if you remember, the psalmist of Israel said, I do not know. Why is it when I look at the wicked one, I see that things are okay with them. And yet with me, I have cleansed my hands. And for one reason or another, I have trouble on every hand. And then remember what the psalmist said, until I went into the tabernacle of the sanctuary of the Lord, and I saw their end. The unbelievers, the unregenerated ones will end up to be separated from God for time and eternity if they don't turn to Him. But those who are redeemed and forgiven, those who belong to the Lord, will experience trials and tribulations here in this world, but it doesn't mean that they, uh, they that this tribulation and trial that happened to them is because of their wrongdoing, but sometimes God allows things to happen here in this world. I want you to turn to Romans chapter 8 for a moment. Notice what it says in Romans 8, Shaul Paul was such a wise man he said when he wrote to the Romans who were believers in Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah, he said to them in verse 22 of Romans chapter 8, he says, For we know that the whole creation is groaning and travailing in pain together until now. The whole creation, beloved brothers and sisters, in this world is groaning because of sin, because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So the believer and the unbeliever experience groaning here in this world alike, just like the, the, the righteous, just like the unrighteous. Shaul Paul continued to say in verse 23, but not only they, in other words, not only the unbelievers, he says that we ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves. He says we also are groaning, just like the unbelievers. And we are waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of the body. We are waiting for the time that the body of ours will be, a, a, that we will receive this glorified body. And we will no longer groan, because in this body we groan. In this world, the righteous and the unrighteous experience difficulties and trouble, and everyone will ultimately die, suffer and die here in this world. But the godly, the believers who are uh, uh, um, submitting to the Lord, receiving godly wisdom, they will learn how to live here in this world even when things are not so well, not so easy. And so in verse 2, of Ecclesiastes chapter 9, all things under the sun happen alike to the righteous and to the wicked. I'm reading verse 2 again. All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, to the good and to the clean and to the unclean, to him that sacrifices and to him that sacrifices not. As is the good, so is the sinner, and he that sweareth is he that feareth an oath. 
In other words, it happened to all the same under the sun. Tachat Hashemesh. Again, to remind you that expression under the sun finds so found so many times here in the book of Kohelet because the whole thought here that Shlomo is seeking to convey to Israel, to convey to the readers, to convey to the believers that the believer is called to live here under the sun when he or she subject themselves to the living God. They are called to live godly under the sun, even in this world that is filled with vanity. And so verses 1, 2, and 3, Shlomo declare that death, suffering and death will happen to all, to the righteous and to the wicked. And so now in verse 3, Shlomo continued to say there is one event unto all, all ultimately go to the dead. All uh, eventually will pass out of this scene. And so we read in verse 3, This is an evil among all things that are done, notice the word, under the sun, tachat Hashemesh, that there is one event unto all. Yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil. And, and madness is in their heart while they live, and after that they go to the dead. And you notice what he says here, eventually, eventually all, the, uh, all humanity passes through this valley of death. Eventually all will die. Let me remind you of the verse that we read in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27, where we read in verse 27, there, listen to this, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, and after this the judgment, so the Messiah, Christ, was once suffered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him, uh, uh, shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation? These are the last two verses of Hebrews chapter 9. In other words, everyone will die. All will have to pass through the valley of death. But for the believer, those that trusted God, have accepted Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah, for us there is the assurance that after we pass out of this scene and we go through that valley of death, we are going to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. And so I'm reading verse 3 once again. This is an evil. The evil, the ra in Hebrew, the evil that will happen to all among all things that are done under the sun is that one event is going to happen unto all. No one will ever escape it. No one will escape death unless, as I mentioned earlier, the unique rapture of the church will take place. Unless we will be like Hanoch in Genesis chapter 5, Enoch, or like Eliyahu, Elijah, who was taken to heaven without to go through death. But it, it is abnormal. All of us are going to go through that special way. It is appointed unto men once to die. And so, in verse 3 of Ecclesiastes chapter 9, there is one event unto all. All will ultimately go through this death. Notice I'm reading once again verse 3, Beloved brothers and sisters, this is an evil among all things that are done under the sun, that there is one event unto all. Yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil. And madness is in their heart while they live. And after that, they go to the dead. In Hebrew, El Hametim. <coughs> so we learn from this, beloved brothers and sisters, that eventually all will die. But praise God, we have the assurance as believers today that we are forgiven. For the believers, we are forgiven. 
we have this assurance that if we pass out of this scene, we will be absent from the body, but present with the Lord. How many a time we have gone to funeral services of believers who trusted in the Mashiach, in the Messiah Yeshua, who believed on him. They are, when they pass out of this scene, they have hope, they are with the Lord. But for the unbelievers who will go through this death, through the a death, death will bring them judgment if they did not trust the Savior. You remember what we read, the wages of sin is death. Romans 6 verse 23, but the gift of God is eternal life. God have extended the gift of life, is eternal life through Christ Jesus, through the Messiah Yeshua, believing in the person and the work of our Lord Yeshua, the Messiah, gives us an assurance of eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Even though one, a believer or an unbeliever alike, pass through the valley of death, but for the believer there is hope. For the unbeliever, sadly, there is judgment, as it is appointed unto men once to die, and after this the judgment. For you and I, if we are believers, the judgment already passed over. Why? Because the Mashiach Yeshua Jesus, he died as a substitute for our sin and sins. And we trust that you will turn to him, you will realize that the only way of salvation is to trust in the Redeemer, in the Savior, in the Messiah of Israel and the Savior of this world. His name is Yeshua. His name is Jesus. And so Shlomo, who is a child of God, speaking to Israel, the nation, and instructing them for those who trusted God to live in wisdom here in this world and to live for God here in this world. Sadly, you remember what happened to Shlomo. He have turned from God. Although he was the wisest man on earth, he have turned away from the God of his fathers. And he ended up following after other gods. He married 700 wives, 300 concubines. He built for them altars. He worshipped their gods. And he turned away from God because the wisdom that God had given to him, he left it. And he thought that he was wiser than the wisdom that God had provided from him, for him from heaven. And he, in his own human wisdom, turned away from God. But now when he writes the book of Kohelet, the book of Ecclesiastes, he is that preacher, the gatherer of the congregation of Israel, and he gives them instruction and he says to Israel, listen, he is saying to them, he declaring to them, death will happen to all of you, to all of us, but still live godly life under the sun. Use the godly wisdom that God had given to you here and live for God no matter what will happen to you here in this world because all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. So the first thing he's mentioning to the people of Israel is saying, accept the fact that death will come upon everyone, believers and unbelievers, but the believers are called to live godly under the sun, Tachat Hashemesh. Now, secondly, in verses 4, 5, and 6, Shlomo continues, and he's speaking to Israel, he's pointing to the fact that while we live, notice, while we live our life, there is hope, there is assurance for the believer. There is hope, there is assurance. And notice this is verses 4, 5, and 6. In verse 4, Shlomo continued to say, when one is alive... He have hope to repent and to turn to God as long that he or she are alive. They have an assurance and hope to turn to God, an opportunity to turn to God. 
and to live for him. Notice what he says in verse 4. For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. And the word here for hope is not tikva, but it is bitachon. It's more, the word is more assurance. For those who are here alive, there is an assurance. As long as one is alive, there is an assurance that if he or she will turn to God, if they are unbelievers, and if he or she who are believers will live for God, if they are believers, for the living dog is better than a dead lion. In other words, Shlomo is saying, listen, what's the point? It's better to be like a dog that is alive than a dead lion. A dog, Kelev, which is alive, is better than a dead Arye lion. Why? Because even though a dog in days of old was considered to be an unclean animal, you see, for us today, who live today, when we have a little puppies, little dogs, we love them, we bring them home, and they are men's best friend. But in Scripture, oftentimes, a dog is presented as an unclean animal that is without. But it is better to be a living dog than a dead lion. The lion, the arrier, he is the, the king of the forest. He is powerful. But it's better to be a living dog that have a, is he still alive than to be a dead lion. A dead lion has no more power here under the sun. He cannot do anything anymore. But a, a living dog has an opportunity uh, to do the right thing. And a man representing unclean, an unclean person has an opportunity and assurance that as long as he or she are living and they turn to God in repentance, they they have a, an assurance that they will be received. And so notice this verse 4, when one is alive, they have hope to repent and to turn to God. A living dog is better than a dead lion. You remember David said in 1 Samuel chapter 24, when David was fleeing away from Saul, and he said to him, why are you pursuing after one like me as a dead dog? David said to, to King Shaul, Shaul HaMelech, he says, why are you pursuing after me? I'm nothing. You're the king. I'm just a, a, a man from the family of Jesse. I'm like a dead dog. Why are you pursuing after me? David said, in other words, I'm, I'm, I'm nothing. Why you seek to kill me? He's saying to, ki, to King Shaul in 1 Samuel chapter 24. You remember Mephibosheth? We read about Mephibosheth in 2 Samuel at chapter a, a 9 and verse 8. In fact, turn to 2 Samuel chapter 9 and verse 8. Listen to what we read there. We read, listen to what we read. And he bowed. This is Mephibosheth. He bowed himself and he said, What is thy servant that thou should look upon such a dead dog as I am? You see, Mephibosheth likened himself as a dead dog who deserved to die, unclean person. And he asked David, David, how come you, you are allowing me to come to sit in your table? I am nothing but a dead dog. And you remember, David is a type of Yeshua HaMashiach. And he took Mephibosheth, who was the son of Yonatan, who was the son of Shaul, the king of Israel, who sought to kill David. And because of Yonatan's sake, David took Mephibosheth, who fell and became lame on both of his legs. And he brought him into his own house. And he allowed him to sit at his own table. Amazing. And that's why Mephibosheth was so overwhelmed. And he said, how come you bring me, you allow me like a dead dog to come to sit at your table? You see, beloved brothers and sisters, this is exactly what Yeshua have done for us. We are by nature like a dead dog. 
unclean. In fact, the meaning of the word mephiboshet is out of my mouth, I breathe shame. Mephi, for my, ba- for my mouth, boshet, shame. And yet David brought him in. He was lame on both of his feet. He couldn't walk. He couldn't stand. And yet David brought him here in to sit at his table. This is exactly what happened to you and I. God brought us in and we sit at the king's table and we are accepted in the beloved. But you see, it is so much better when one, notice verse 4, when one is alive, he has hope, he has assurance. And he or she can repent before God. Even as believers, when we go away from the Lord and we can repent before the Lord and turn to him in repentance, he's going to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness on the basis of the finished work of our Lord Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah. But how sad is when one dies He might be a king. He might be a lion with all the power that he had on earth. He has no more, you might say, no more impossibility to change his life. If he or she were unbelievers, they cannot repent any longer because after death coming judgment. If he or she are believers, they don't have any more the opportunity to serve God as they could as believers here and now. You know how many times we could serve God today? when we are alive and we don't do so because later on when we are going to go to heaven as believers we are going to to see to look back and we said how many a times i had an opportunity to serve our lord and i didn't and so listen to this again in verses 4 to 6 Shlomo is pointing to the fact that while we are alive, there is hope, there is an assurance, there is an advantage in being alive and serving God. Unbelievers can turn to God as long as they are alive. Even though they are, we all by nature are dirty like dead dogs, we can repent, we can turn to God. And we can accept the Lord Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah, who loved us and gave himself for us, who died for us on the cross, on the tree, and he was buried and he rose for our justification. And so we continue here in Ecclesiastes chapter 9 in verses, and notice that verses 5 and 6, death. Shlomo is saying to Israel, death, notice that, Death ends all relationship and rewards and portion here under the sun. When one dies, it ends all, notice that, all relationship, all rewards, and every portion that we have here on earth. I'm reading, listen to this, verses 5 and 6. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead knoweth not anything. Neither have they any more a reward for the memory of them that is forgiven, for forgotten. And notice that he's saying here in verse 6, also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. This is the second time that he's using the word under the sun in chapter 9 in Hebrew, Tachat Hashemesh. Remember, beloved brothers and sisters, that the whole book of Ecclesiastes deal with our life here under the sun. Not in heaven, not above the sun. We are going to be above the sun. We are going to be in the presence of the Lord. We are going to be in heaven. We are going to be in the Father's house. But until we get there, we are here under the sun, Tachat Hashemesh. And we are called to realize here under the sun that uh, the fact that as long as we are alive, there is hope to live life for the Lord. The unregenerated one, there is hope and assurance that they can be saved if they turn to the Lord. And so verse 5, for the living know that they shall die. You know, we all know that we are all going to die. 
But the dead, who already died, they know not anything. In other words, they're out of the scene. They're no longer involved with what's going on here under the sun. Neither have they any more rewards here on earth, no more reward. The believer has rewards in heaven after he or she died in the future messianic kingdom. But for the unbeliever, there's nothing anymore here under the sun. They've ended their life here on earth. For the memory of them is forgotten. That's it. They finish their course here on this earth and they are gone out of this scene. Verse 6 tells us also their love and their hatred, their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything not as that is done under the sun. In other words, beloved brothers and sisters, listen to this. What Shlomo is really saying, that as long that we are here under the sun, here in this world, it is only here that we can live for God. Once we have gone, once we died, there is nothing anymore that we can do for the Lord here on earth under the sun. And all the works that we do, remember, we read in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 10, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of the Messiah. That everyone's doing will be observed by the Lord. How did we live our life here under the sun? Whatever we have done for Christ, for the Mashiach, he will reward us in the future. And whatever we have done for the flesh will be burned with fire. The unbelievers, when they leave this scene, sadly, sadly, they will be eternally separated from a holy God because their sins are still upon them. They didn't receive the one that gave himself for them. And therefore, beloved brothers and sisters, as long that we are alive, as long that one is alive here under the sun, verses 4, 5, and 6, Shlomo pointing to the fact that, that while we are here alive, while one is alive here under the sun, there is a hope. There is an assurance. There is a way whereby one can live for God here under the sun, Tachat Hashemesh. Now notice, in the last portion of this a section of Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verses 1 to 10. We are to accept the fact that we all will suffer and die. Shaul, I should say Shlomo, is saying in verses 7, 8, 9, and 10 that uh, he is encouraging Israel and he is encouraging you and I to enjoy life while we are here on earth when God is in our life. God must be portion of our life. In fact, we read, we will read, and we pointed to it many times. Remember now thy creator in the day of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. In other words, don't forget God. Remember your creator in the day of your youth already. Live for God under the sun because... When you are going to leave this scene, you are no longer going to have any, any input, any, anything to do here under the sun for the Lord. And therefore, enjoy God. Enjoy what He has given to you. Enjoy fellowship with Him. Enjoy everything that He provided for you under the sun, but have it with fellowship with Him. Notice I'm reading these verses, verses 7 8 and 9. God, he says, go and enjoy what God gave you. Food and feasts and family. Listen to verses 7, 8 and 9. Go thy way, Shlomo is saying to Israel. Eat thy bread with joy and drink thy wine with merry heart. For God now accept thy works. Verse 8, and let thy garment be always white, and let thy head lack no ointment, living joyfully with the wife 
whom thou lovest all the days of the life of thy vanity, which he has given thee under the sun all the days of thy vanity, for that is thy portion in this life and in thy labor, which thou takest under the sun. You notice once again, he using the word under the sun, Tachat Hashemesh. And you notice what, what Shlomo is saying to Israel? You notice what Shlomo is saying to the believers, to all of us, what he's really saying? That we are to enjoy the things that God has given to us here in this world, but to do it with God. To do it with God as the center of our life. To, to do it with the Lord Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah, here in this world, He become the center of our lives. He is the one that blessed us. He's the one that saved us. He's the one that provided for us. Turn with me to 1 Timothy chapter uh, 6, beloved brothers and sisters. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Uh, there uh, Paul said to Timothy in verses 17 and 18. Listen to this. <clears throat> He's saying in verse uh, uh, 17 and 18, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, charge them that are rich in the world, in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who gives us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. In other words, beloved brothers and sisters, God had given us all things richly to enjoy here on earth. Even though we have trials and challenges here in this world, but God wants us to enjoy what he had given to us. And you notice we have these three uh, uh, letters F. Food, feasts, and family. In these verses, Ochel, Smachot, and Mishpacha in Hebrew. Food, feast, celebration, godly celebration, and family. In these verses 7, 8, and 9. I'm reading this again. Go thy way and eat bread. That's the food that God had provided for us. Praise God for the food that he has given to us. We are to give thanks because all things was given to us by God. And then he says, eh, with joy and drink with thy wine with a merry heart, for God now accepts thy work. God have received you if you do the right thing and you live for the Lord. God have accepted you, enjoy what he had given to you, but do it with him, not without him. And then verse 8, let thy raiment be always white, and let thy head lack no ointment. In other words, really enjoy. It's nothing wrong with dressing well, normal wellness. We don't need to be uh, unclean or be, uh, uh, you know, uh, God providing for us. We are to enjoy it. We are to act upon it, but to recognize that everything was given to us by God. And then notice the family. Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the day of the, the life of thy vanity. In other words, we live in this world which is filled with emptiness. You remember what we read in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, the words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem, vanity of vanity, says the preacher, vanity of vanity, all is vanity here in this world. Everything is empty without God. And therefore, whatever you have, enjoy it with God, not without God. Because otherwise, it is truly empty. But when God is the center of our life, when the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, is the center of our life, then we are to enjoy the food that God provides for us. We enjoy the feast that God provided for us. You think about it in Israel history, the feast of Pesach, the feast of unleavened bread, the feast of first fruit, the feast of weeks, the feast of uh, the trumpets, 
the feast of the day of atonement, the feast of uh, tabernacle Sukkot, the various celebrations that God had given to His people, the appointed season with Him. All the Moadim was given to Israel to enjoy God as they enjoy the feasts. And you and I, when we gather together around the Lord Yeshua, the Messiah, we are to enjoy Him in the midst of the saints. So to enjoy the food, the feast, and the family. Thank God for our wives and our husband. How important it is, husband, love your wife. Is the Messiah love the assembly? Why be subject to your own husband as it is commanded in the law? And we are to enjoy one another. We are to love one another. We are to embrace one another. Thank the Lord for the children that God had given the saints of God. So food, feasts, and family. Ochel, smachot, the weddings, the bar mitzvahs, the all sort of celebration that we can enjoy, but there are the family, and especially the family of God. We are to enjoy the family of God. And notice I will conclude here with verse 10. In verse 10, we read, Whatever you do in your life, do it with God in mind, and do it as He is the center of your life. Notice I'm reading verse 10. Notice, he says, Whatsoever thy hand findest to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom in the grave. When you die in the grave, there is no more. The Hebrew word for grave here is really Sheol. The Greek will be Hades. It's really not the word grave. What he means, there is nothing anymore under the sun when you're going to Sheol, you, when you're going to Hades, and the believers are going to the presence of the Lord. There's nothing what you can do anymore after you leave this scene. And if you remember, beloved brothers and sisters, Sheol is the place of the departed spirits. Before the Lord Jesus the Messiah died and was buried and rose again, all who died went to Sheol. But Sheol had more than one compartment. There was the place in Sheol for the righteous, but there was a place in Sheol for the unrighteous. And there was a division between them that the one could not pass to the other side. And if you remember in Luke 16, when the rich man died, he went unto Hades, to the place of the departed spirits, but the bad place. But when Eliezer, Lazarus, died, he went to Abraham's bosom. He went to the good part of Sheol, of Hades. But of course, after Yeshua died and was buried and rose again, he have really emptied the good part of Sheol, of Hades, and he took all the believers to be with him in heaven. That's why when a believer in Yeshua and the Messiah dies today, he is absent from the body, and he's not going anymore to paradise or to Hades or to Sheol. He is present with the Lord, 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 8. And so, beloved brothers and sisters, here is verse 10, and I'm going to conclude with this. Whatsoever thy hand findest to do, do it with thy might, for there is no work, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom in the grave, in Sheol, in Hades, where thou goest. That was before the Messiah died on the shameful cross, before the redemption was completed. In other words, you as believers, to live for God here under the sun to remember that uh, there is no more work to do after death. There is no more device or cheshbon anymore. There is no more any knowledge after we pass out of this scene. There is no more wisdom to live out our wisdom here on earth when we go to glory because we are going to be in the presence of the Lord and no longer 
have to roam here in this world. Now I'm going to conclude with reading 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31. Paul said to the Corinthian believers in verse 31 of 1 Corinthians chapter, ta- chapter 10, Whatsoever therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all things, do all to the glory of God. Whatever we do here as we are here in this world, we are to do for the glory of God. How wonderful, beloved friends and dear brothers and sisters, Shlomo is saying that all things in life is in the hand of God. And we all have to remember that to accept the fact that death, suffering and death will come upon all, the believer and unbeliever. And we are called to recognize that death will happen to all, that as long as we are alive, there is hope, and that we are to enjoy here life, as long as we live for God here in this world, blessing will flow to those that have trusted in God. May the Lord help us. May the Lord encourage us to continue to follow after Him here under the sun, Tachat Hashemesh. Soon, Yeshua will come and He will take us to be with Him above the sun in the Father's house forever. No more to suffer. No more to go through that process of pain, sorrow, and death here in this world. Praise God for the hope that believers have. Well, we will have to close the meeting now and say shalom to you all. And so our God and our Father, thank you for the hope that we believers have. And we ask that you will encourage us to follow God as we are here under the sun, to live for our Lord Yeshua the Messiah here under the sun. Thank you for the hope that we have in him. For we ask it, our God and our Father, in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. Well, my dear friend, God bless you. We say Shabbat Shalom to you all. Until the next time, we will have to conclude with saying Shalom Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Bye-bye. Take care.